All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the sampling distribution for the proportion. And remember, a sampling distribution is all possible statistics that that particular statistic can take on. It's the probability distribution of all possible statistics. So what we have here is a problem that says Pew Research reported that in 2013, 78% of all teenagers owned a cell phone. If we randomly select 100 teens, what is the probability that less than three-fourths of this sample owns a cell phone? So the first thing I want you to know is we need to identify that we're talking about a proportion here. And we can tell we're talking about a proportion because we see this percentage right here, the 78% of all teenagers. And this 78% of all teenagers means we're talking about a population value. And remember, when we talk about a population value, that is the true value. So the first thing I want to do is I want to identify what the proportion is. And so my P here is that the P is equal to the true proportion of teens who own a cell phone. That's where I start this at. I want to identify what is the true proportion or what is the true population value. And I know that that P value itself, that P is equal to 78% or 0.78. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to actually find the percentage that doesn't own a cell phone, which is what we call 1 minus P, also equal to Q. And that value is 0.22. So that's the first step, identifying that P. The other thing I want to identify is what is the standard deviation or the standard error of that P. So we can find the standard error. Standard error of P is equal to the square root of P, 0.78, times Q, 0.22, divided by my sample size. And here my sample size was told me in the, in the sample was 100 teens. So my sample is 100. N is equal to 100 here. And if I calculate that, I get 0 0.041, three decimals. So I found these particular parameters for this particular distribution, all right? And the next thing I want to do is I want to see, I want to find a probability, and I'm assuming that that probability is normal. But to actually use that assumption of normality, we have to check for it. So we're going to check our conditions next, and we have two conditions. The first condition says that we have enough successes and failures to make it look normal. So the normality check. And to do that, we call it the success-failure rule. And remember, to show success failure, n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times q has to be greater than or equal to 10. So we're going to state that. My n again is 100. My p is 0.78. So that's equal to 78. And then my q, 100, times my q, which is 0.22, that's equal to 22. So because both of these are bigger than that, the normal condition holds. We can assume normality. We'll assume normality here for this. The other thing I want to check is that they're independent. And to check, check that it's independent, we're going to state, we're going to state that we're not sampling more than 10% of the population. So what we're going to say is, the independent condition says, surely, we always start off by saying surely, seven, surely 100 teens, the sample size that we've taken, 100 teens is less than 10%. It's the 10% rules. We call this is less than 10% of all teens who own a cell phone. So we state that. This shows that we're saying the sample is independent. We recognize that it's independent. We can go from there. Now, once we have all of this, we can actually find the probability. Or basically what we're saying now is because these two conditions are met, because this condition, the independent condition, and the success failure condition are met, we know that p hat, which is going to be the sample statistic, p hat, p hat is approximately normal with the mean of the population mean or in a population proportion this time, 0.78, and a standard deviation of the standard error, which is sigma PR, 0.041.
Now, we need to find p-hat. Well, they tax us, they wanna know what is the probability that less than three-fourths, less than three-fourths. So that means that my p-hat here is 0.75. That's my p-hat. And I wanna find the probability of it being less than three-fourths. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I have this normal check here, because of the normality check right here, I know that the distribution is going to be normal. So I'm gonna draw a normal curve. Set my mean at the mean of the population, which is the proportion, population proportion of 0.78. My P is 0.75 over here. And I wanna be less than, I wanna find the probability that P hat is less than 0.75. So I'm gonna shade that to the left, like this. And now, because I know that this is a normal curve that I'm looking at, because it's normal, right? Because that is normal. I can use my calculator and normal CDF to do this function. So I do normal CDF. The lower bound here is where is the shading starting? Well, it's starting way out here. Remember, we call that negative 999. The upper bound is where is the shading stopping? Well, it's stopping at 0.75. The mean for the distribution is right here, which is 0.78. Or you can look at the curve. It's also on the curve. And the standard deviation is right here at 0.041, which is that new standard error that we calculated. I type that in my calculator. I get... I get this equal to 0.232. So the probability of finding a sample that has a proportion, a statistical proportion, because this is an estimate, an estimate proportion of three-fourths or less is equal to 0.232.